Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are five days away as of this recording from the NFL Combine in Indianapolis, and with it, we're going to start getting some more information about the future of Ezekiel Elliott with the Dallas Cowboys because we know that the representation for Zeke, we're going to go to the Combine and get some information about his value and ultimately just determine what he's going to be worth to the Dallas Cowboys and what they would expect from a pay cut that they think is fair. So with that being said, we're going to look at where Zeke is at currently, his contract, and some pay cuts that have already taken place, and, you know, where his value really resides at the end of the day. And with that being said, let's dive straight into it. Now, before we get started, guys, if you can hit the like button, that'd be greatly appreciated. Subscribe if you're new. Hit that notification bell as well. And if you want to support the channel further, think about hitting the join button and becoming a media member today. Now, with that said, we know for the longest time, ever since we lost to the 49ers in the playoffs, that this was going to end up being the moment where we get a little bit more information in the next couple of days. After the playoff game, there was reports that Zeke was willing to take a pay cut. Then his father comes out and says that he wasn't going to take a pay cut. So then we go into the time before the combine, about like three to two weeks beforehand, and now it's, okay, well, the representation will meet in Indianapolis and see what he's worth. Now, the biggest story that's come out of this entire situation in the past week or two is that we've been hearing from multiple sources that the NFL community, that being executives, analysts, or anybody that's from another team, granted they're anonymous, but there isn't anybody that said anything with who they are and where they're from, say that Zeke doesn't have much left in the tank and that he's really a short yardage specialist and not really worth anything other than the vet minimum. Now, with that being said, do I think that Zeke's services are worthy of a vet minimum or they're only worth a vet minimum? You can make the argument, but considering other running backs and the market there, I think Zeke can definitely make a couple million dollars, and I'm going to get into that market value in a little bit. But first, let's actually go over where Zeke's contract stands as of this current moment, what the Dallas Cowboys are looking at, and really what it might end up leading to. So let's take a look at that contract. So with Ezekiel Elliott, his current contract is as follows. We are in the potential out period for Zeke's contract. Now with that, the Cowboys can release him post June 1st and start saving money. So if they release him before June 1st, it's going to be a situation where you have a ton of dead cap this year and you get $4 million back on the books, but still you're really not saving any money at that point in time. However, by releasing him post June 1st, you would be spreading a dead cap hit of $11 million over two years, $5 million or $5.8 million this year more specifically, and $6 million in 2024, but saving $10 million in 2023, but that being a net of $5 million down the road. But you would get the contract off the books. So realistically, we are now in the period of time where releasing Ezekiel Elliott is a legitimate possibility for the Dallas Cowboys. Now, if they decide to keep Ezekiel Elliott, they're definitely going to need it to be at a reduced rate. Because if we look at the statistical production, as we've seen, and I understand that many people like to use this as the uh, coup de grace for if a player deserves money, and this is exactly what happened with Des Bryant many years ago. After the 2017 season, it was deemed necessary that, hey, Dez is getting paid as a top five receiver, but he isn't putting up that level of production, so he needs to take a pay cut or they need to let him go. The Cowboys elected to do the latter, and in that exact moment of time, what happened was, was that the Dallas Cowboys and Dez Bryant met behind closed doors. They looked to try and get a reduced rate. That didn't go anywhere. A couple months later, they cut him. In the middle of February, rather, they met with him, and they cut him right before the NFL draft, albeit not right before the NFL draft, but in the middle of the free agency period, which is not a smart thing to do. The smartest thing to do is that if you're looking to let go of a player, you just need to rip the Band-Aid off, which is what irritates me about the Dallas Cowboys, is they like to hold on to their players for way too long, and it feels like you're doing them a disservice. If you really like the player enough, but you know that you're not going to keep them, I think out of respect, like you've done with other players like DeMarcus Ware and company, 
you would let them go and let them find another team at the beginning of free agency so they're not screwed over and the team's already spent all their capital to go acquire people. Now, with that being said, a couple of other things that I wanted to get out of the way. Now, a lot of people, when they look at what Zeke could go for if he wants to get a reduced salary, is, well, let's look at the most recent pay cut that's taken place with a running back, and that was Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones took a $5 million pay cut, and that put his salary now down to $9 million. But you might be saying, okay, what has he done? Well, this past year, he had 213 carries, 1,121 yards, 5.3 yards per carry, and just two rushing touchdowns. Now, granted, Zeke had 12 rushing touchdowns, and that's no slouch. I'm not going to act like Zeke isn't a bum for getting into the end zone because those are important, but those were mostly on the one-yard line. And Zeke hasn't had a rush of over 30-plus yards in well over a year. And also, Zeke never had a 100-yard game this year. Well, Aaron Jones has had several. The next question is, is, okay, so then what is Zeke going to be worth? Many people look at Zeke's value as being somewhere within the 2 to 4, upwards to $5 million range. You might be asking, well, where am I getting these numbers? I look at a guy like Jamal Williams, who is very similar to the conversation we're having here, being a short yardage back. Now, albeit, he did have a more productive ze- uh, you know, season than Ezekiel Elliott. And also, he got over 1,000 yards. And to be honest with you, you know, when you look at the breakdown of his numbers, it was a lot more efficient than Ezekiel Elliott. Um not by much, just averaging 4.1 yards per, you know, carry and all that other stuff. But, you know, getting 17 rushing touchdowns is no slouch. So if we're using that as the barometer for what Zeke is worth in this current period of time, because if Zeke plays two more games, I do think he gets nearly 1,000 yards. Maybe. He definitely would notch 900. And if you think that, hey, I would like to add Jamal Williams for that money, like a two-year, $4.1 million salary... That makes sense. It definitely makes sense if that's what your philosophy is. As for me, I am very heartbroken, you know, for Ezekiel Elliott because, you know, knowing how long that he's been with the Cowboys and me watching him for this entire period of time, it's going to suck like it did with Dez when we let Dez go. This is what I think is going to happen, ladies and gentlemen, and... It pains me to say it because I think that this is exactly what's going to happen. The representation will meet in Indianapolis and they'll get their numbers. The Cowboys will say that Zeke is worth this much. The representation will say either yes or no to that. Odds are they'll say no because the Cowboys will probably look for a significant pay cut. But this is all up to Ezekiel Elliott and what he wants to do. If he truly wants to be a Cowboy for life, then he's going to take the pay cut. But I understand that this is a business. And I've said in the past that the Dallas Cowboys have not shown to incentivize players to take pay cuts, regardless of the situation. You know, they don't spend the money. They just sit on their ass and do nothing. Now, with Tony Pollard being factored into this equation, as I left him out because I wanted to wait until this, if the Cowboys, which they're planning on doing, ultimately franchise tag Tony Pollard, which they probably will depending on when that takes place, whether it be during this recording or not. Then the question is, is okay, is Zeke okay with being the backup? Which, I can't speak for that, and I don't know. I do know that Zeke loves it here in Dallas, and we need to realize that he is not the guy that he once was at the beginning of his career. And this is just what happens with running backs. He was smart to get paid when he did because the Cowboys were most likely going to run him into the ground. And after the 2019 season, he has had a very pedestrian career to this point. But let's not act like he's a scrub. He is the youngest and fastest individual to get to 10,000 all-purpose scrimmage yards. That is definitely worth something. He has a total of 80 touchdowns. And I guarantee you, with how young he is, if he continues to play in the league and average about five to 800 rushing yards, he will eclipse 10,000 rushing yards. He will definitely be in that category. But with you know, an all-pro to his name, three Pro Bowls, 
is that enough to get him into the Hall of Fame? Because that's what some people are asking. And why am I having this conversation? Because I fully believe that Ezekiel Elliott will be gone. The Dallas Cowboys are doing what I would expect them to do. Wait, wait, wait. And then eventually just be like, all right, guys, time to call it quits. Steven Jones talked about his money in the offseason. And I hate it because, you know, they like to talk highly about Zeke, but here we are now. So with that being said, guys, I think if Zeke wants to remain on this team, whether you want him on here or not, I think that the number that they're probably going to throw at him is around 3 to $5 million. If he says no, he will be gone. And I have a, a very big hunch that he will not be on the team in 2023. And, you know, I've said they need to revamp the running back room. But you need to be understanding of your situation. If you feel like Zeke is going to be your short yardage back and he's going to be good at doing that, and you bring Pollard back, to me there's no purpose of paying your running backs you know, that much money. Putting $15 million into a running back room is absurd. I would say at most you should be putting between 3 to 6, depending on the player or players that you have. But the Cowboys have this ass backwards, like I've said numerous times. In my ideal world, if I know how the Cowboys operate, you just start fresh, go into the draft, get some guys, and roll from there. With what the Cowboys might do, the Cowboys will most likely tag Pollard, get Zeke out of here, and draft a guy. Or there's the possibility that they bring Zeke back on a cheaper contract. But if it were me, I think, to be real with you guys, rip the Band-Aid and start over. Um, that's just kind of where I'm at. We don't need to be spending this kind of, uh, you know, capital towards the running back position. We have other positions of need that we can throw money at. And I feel as if the Dallas Cowboys just sitting on their ass doing nothing is not accomplishing anything. We're starting to see teams release players. And will Zeke follow suit in that? We will see. But that's kind of where we stand right now, guys. So with that being said, I do hope you enjoyed this video. Please make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. This is Space Cowboy Media signing off. Have a good one.